Okay, so this is now the second half of the lecture. So, first of all, the level three cluster. And so, the cluster is, consider all ordered pairs of integers A and B between one and 100 inclusive, such that this is an integer. And this is the numerator. And so among all of these pairs, we should find the one with the largest value of B. And if B is equal, we put priority on A, basically. And so the first thing we can notice is that the fraction A plus B times A plus B plus one divided by AB. If you expand it out, it, you get that this is equal to two plus a squared plus b squared plus a plus b divided by ab. And so now we can set this part equal to the variable c. And so basically that means that we can define c such that a plus b times a plus b plus 1 is equal to ab times C plus two. Mm -hmm. And so now we can take a specific A, B such that A is at least B and for some value of C. Sorry about that. Okay. So for some value of C. And so now we consider the quadratic x squared minus bc minus 1 x plus b squared plus b equals 0. And so we can notice that one root of this is a. And the other root is, would be bc minus a minus 1 because of the that's in this. And so at the same time, the other root is also equal to b squared plus b over a because v on this. And so this is at most equal, at most b squared plus b over b plus 1. And clearly this is just equal to b. And so that tells us that zero is less than or equal to, sorry, zero is less than bc minus a minus one, and this in turn is at most b. Uh, okay, hold on for a second. Okay, sorry about that. So, how did I get this quadratic? Um, I believe it basically comes from this, kind of comes from this, like in the sense that this is basically just plugging in a just turning a into x in here and then that would get you this i believe that's how you get this yeah so yeah that's how you get this quadratic and that's how you know one root is a and so then you have this found and so also you, from this, you can get that the fact that b and bc minus a minus 1 is also a solution. And so what this means is that all solutions a, b will eventually reach a point where a equals b. 
And at this point, we can we can plug in from our initial definition of what C was, we can plug this in. And so that tells us that C equals two plus two over A or two plus two over B, but it doesn't really matter because they're equal here. And so A and C are integers. And so that means that A can only be one or two. And the corresponding values of C are C equals <clears throat> four and three uh, in this order. So one goes to four and two goes to three. And so now we can just reverse this process. And so if C equals, so if C equals, so if C equals three, then the solution would be two, two. And the previous one will be two, three. And before this will be three, six. And six, 14. And before this is 14, 35. And before this is 35, 90. And so clearly at this point, you can't continue because if you remember initially, there was a bound of from one to 100 for A and B. And now the other case is if C is equal to four. And in this case, the initial values would go from one, two, 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 six, to six, 21, and to 21, 77. And at this point, you can see once again that this is too far. But that going one more step before this would go out of this the bound up here. And so the two possible answers are 3590 and 2177. And since we're finding the one with the largest value of B, the answer is 3590. All right. And so now we can go on to the other question. And the other question is find all N Find all n such that 2 to the power of n plus 12 to the n plus 2011 to the n is a perfect square. Sorry about that. So, so yeah, so now, first of all, we can just do n equals one. And in this case, two to the one plus 12 to the one plus 2011 to the power of one is equal to two plus 12 plus 2011, which is equal to 2025. And we should know that this is equal to 45 squared. And so now we have, we can let n be greater than one such that n is odd. So n is odd and n is greater than one. And so in this case, two to the n plus 12 to the n plus 2011 to the n mod four will be congruent to four times two to the something plus zero plus three to the n mod four. And so this is four, so this also goes to zero. And the reason 12 to the n goes to zero is because 12 has a factor of four in the first place. And now 2011 to the n is congruent to three to the n. And so for three mod, 3 to the n mod 4, if n is even, then 3 to the n is congruent to 1 mod 4. And if n is odd, then 3 to the n is congruent to 3 mod 4. And here we already included that n is odd, so this is congruent to 3 mod 4. And so 
A perfect square, mod 4, and squared for some integer n can only be congruent to 0 or 1, mod 4. And so, and so this is congruent to, this is congruent to 3 mod 4 for n odd and if n is greater than 1. And so what that means is there are zero solutions in this case. And so the other case is when n equals 2k for some positive, for positive k. And then, and so another thing we should note okay, is that for zero, this doesn't work. And if n is negative, then these are all less than one and they can't be perfect squares. The sum is less than one. Okay, so n equals 2k. And now in this case, this is congruent 2011 to the n plus 12 to the n plus to the n is equal to 2011 to the 2k plus 12 to the 2k plus 2 to the 2k. And so clearly this is greater than 2011 to the 2k or 2011, sorry, 2011 to the power of k. 2011 to the power of k squared. And also at the same time, we have that 12 to the power of 2k plus 2 to the power of 2k is equal to 144 to the power of k plus 4 to the k. And so k is positive. So we can say that this is less than 2011 to the power of k. And that's because this factor of something less than 145 each time k increases. And this increases by a factor of 2011 each time it increases. And when k is 1, this is already larger. And so that means that for all positive k, this holds true. And so what that means is that 2011 to the power of 2k plus 12 to the power of 2k plus 2 to the power of 2k is less than 2011 to the power of 2k plus 2011 to the power of k and so clearly this is less than 2011 to the 2k plus 2011 Okay. 2 times 2011 to the k plus 1, and this is equal to 2011 to the power of k plus 1 squared. And so that means that 2011 to the k squared is less than 2011 to the 2k plus 12 to the 2k plus 2 to the 2k is less than 2011, 11, 2011 to the power of k plus 1 squared. And so that means that this is strictly, that means that this expression is strictly bounded between two consecutive perfect squares. And so clearly what that means is that this cannot be a perfect square itself. Sorry. Oh well. So this is also has zero solutions. And we've also shown that n equals zero and n less than zero have no solutions. And so what that means is that the only solution for the only solution such that okay. Okay. What just happened? Okay, whatever. And so that means that the only solution for two to the n plus four to the n. So the only solution for two to the n plus four to the n plus twenty eleven to the power of n, 
to be a perfect square is when n equals 1. And that's the only solution. And so does anyone have any questions on either of these problems? Uh, okay, I don't think so, and so, okay, well, the second part, the second part, uh, I can try it right now, uh, hold on, okay, I'm assuming you're talking about the 2k parts, and I'll just try that really fast, so, 20, uh, 2011 is 4 to the n plus 3 to the n plus 2 to the n. Would that work? Okay, so n is 2k, that goes to nothing. Okay, I guess it could work, I guess. This is 4 to the k plus 16 to the k. Yeah, it probably could work. But yeah, so does anyone have any other questions? Okay, yeah, mod 3 works, because that's just, yeah. So, I don't think there are any other questions. And so, yeah, I guess we can move on to the third part of the meeting. Okay, yeah, so the third part of the lecture is, the third part of the meeting is a uh, problem writing session. And if you want, if you want, I guess you could leave now. I mean, you could have left during, between any of these parts if you wanted. But anyways, yeah. So the way this works is that in this overly file, you just make a new file and add in your actual name and click create. And then, yeah. And so you can just like copy off of one of that these that's already been made. And so the way this tech, the, the way this C works is basically that this section is a problem. And then this section would be the solution, the section, and yeah. And so the, these tags are basically the subjects and then the level. The level doesn't really matter. It, yeah, but if you really want to include it, I guess you can, if you want. And just this increases by five. This, it goes by increments of five. And yeah, I think you can see the URL on the top. So if you want, you can join the thing. Let's see. Okay, yeah, so this is Okay, so what you're supposed to do 
is basically in so you go to this overleaf project and then you create a new file and then you change this name to your name dot p and you press create and then so after that you create a it creates a blank file for you and then to do that you, and then after this to create problems you can just copy off of one file example file that's already been created and so this is the stuff that you need and so after that this is an example of how the .c file is used or whatever it's called and so the way this works is basically you can copy this format and then the only parts you would probably change are this and this part is just the problem statement the problem statement and then this part what Overleaf tells me to like sign up before I could do it. So you're supposed to change the parts. Of the, uh, yeah, like, you need it. Okay. To, for there to be a unique solution. Uh, yeah, you need to change this. Because I don't want it. Hey, uh, how do really I quick. edit? I think I, I'm, I'm view only. Oh. So we want to do like. Oh. So can you first change, to change like from tw from a line from twenty one all the from twenty one to to the end? It doesn't really matter what line. It's the these boxes of text. These that? blocks of text. Yeah, you change the blocks of text. Not you don't change them based off of the line numbers. And so this this block of text would be the solution, and then here would just be the tag. And yeah, you can just directly change those tags. Well, do you have to change the problem? Uh, don't just copy paste someone else's problem as your own. So that marks the end of today's meeting. And so next week will be a very similar structure, except that the third part will also have, will also most likely have a guest speaker. And so thank you for coming.